Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Early Stage Webinar for Teenagers. And I'm Monica. And today we're going to talk about cup surfing. And uh, just, uh, yeah, just write uh, where, where you are from, whether you can hear us, whether you can, uh, where you can see us. And uh, I'm just super excited to have our guests with me, uh, Rochelle and Gaia, uh, who are from uh, Italy. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about cup surfing. Uh, but first, just tell me, how are you today? Uh, actually, I received quite a lot of energy from the sunshine because we had a really sunny day today. And write how you are feeling, guys, whether you're fine, how you're doing at home, without school, from Warsaw, super, super. And okay, so as I said, I'm just super excited to have Rochelle and Gaia with me. So can you just... Uh, Tell a few words about yourself, girls. Um, hi, I'm Rochelle and I'm Gaia. And actually, uh, we both live in Bologna, Italy, um, but I'm actually American. I was born in the United States uh, in Minnesota, in between the border between Minnesota and North Dakota. And um, but now we, I live in Bologna. I've been here for 15 years, and Gaia was born here, so she's uh, Italian and Australian and American. Um, and um, that's all. We're excited to be here today. Thanks for inviting us. Super. We're really happy to have you here. And our, yeah, our viewers just, yeah, we can see uh, Piotrek and Małgosia from Warsaw. And um, yeah, so how are you today? Okay. Are you happy? Are you excited? No, we can just look here. Okay, so uh, why don't we start from the presentation and from some kind of revision of the words. You had maybe a chance to do the quiz before our webinar connected with capture things. So let's have a look at our slides. So what I would like from you, I'm going to read the sentence and there are going to be two options. And I would like you to write on the chat which option you think is the correct one? So are you ready? I hope you are. I hope you've got a lot of energy and you're going to do great. So Rachel and Gaia, will you help me? Great, so let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a second. Oh gosh, uh, okay. Just a second, okay. So what about the first one? What are the difficulties you are most likely to mm, while traveling to other countries? What do you think? Is it reciprocate or maybe encounter? Just can you share what you think it might be? Oh, somebody writes that we are lonely, we can't go to France, okay? Okay. That's what we're here to so, learn. So, what do you think? Encounter. Great. I think it is encounter. Wait a second. I need to go to slides. So, let's check whether you're right. Of course. So, encounter while traveling to other countries because you encounter difficulties. Okay. What about the next one? Would you agree with me, Rochelle and Gaia? Yeah, we were saying, Gaia was wondering, um, she didn't know the word encounter, but she said, okay. is it like meat? And we yeah. said, yeah, it's similar to to encounter, to meet. Yeah, good. Super. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. What about that one? So maybe, Rochelle, you will read for me. Sure. I'm really surprised you've managed to buy the tickets hmm. at a fraction of the normal price or crashing on a spare couch. Hmm. It's an interesting one. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Managed to buy the tickets. A difficult one or an easy one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so it's at a fraction of the normal price. I'm really surprised you've managed to buy the tickets at a fraction of the normal price, which means, which means... So like if you, if yeah. you have... 
the whole price, but it's just a piece of the whole price, just a fraction. Yes, just a fraction. Great. So you're lucky to get the these tickets at a fraction of the normal price. Okay. What about the next one? Are you ready? Okay. So Gaia, why don't you read now? Okay. Have you ever thought of what your top ten ideas would be? Weirdo or bucket list? Hmm. Bucket li list. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Weirdo. Guesses. Bucket list. Okay. Okay. So let's see the answer. Okay, that's the bucket list. And the bucket list, what's that? Actually, these are the things we would like to do before actually we die so the things we would like to do not that uh, positive but still uh, the things you wanted bucket list things you want to do in life yeah definitely just in your life and then you just write the list uh, okay let's let's proceed with the next one i'd be curious to hear what the students bucket lists would be uh-huh so have you got any that ideas? Might, that might be a good uh, a good uh, assignment for the next thing is what would your top 10 bucket list be for your students? So maybe now, now have you got any ideas, guys? Have you got anything? Oh, yeah, I have some things on my bucket list. Me too. Okay. Yeah. So girls, would you like to share? Um, what do you, what's on your bucket list? Well, uh, I would like a cat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to get a cat and, um, I'd like to travel the whole world. Um, oh, okay. Pretty unattainable at that moment. At the moment. Yeah. I would travel say. Dorota says it's on her bucket list. Okay. Uh, Dorota wrote that she uh, would like to travel to Italy. <laughs> okay. That's great. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, uh, I would love to be in Italy. I would like to live in Italy as well. I love Italy. That's I want to go yeah. to Rio de Janeiro to okay. during um, Carnivale. Okay. Cunegunda writes that she wants to buy a camera and travel to many places and do photos. Okay, that's perfectly fine. I mean, that's great, I would say. So still just uh, after coronavirus is over yeah, just the word belongs yeah we're going to have well, another chance wants to, to go travel. to australia <laughs> yes. gaia has australia. been to australia okay. gaia's grandma and grandpa live in australia okay great it, it, it's pretty far i would say from europe mm -hmm. okay let's proceed with the next one uh, okay we do our best to respect their spiritual and cultural beliefs, but they do not reciprocate or put up. What do you think? Mm. Goes in here. Mm -hmm. We do our best to respect their spiritual beliefs, or they put up. but they do not. To Colombia, I can see that there are a lot of traveling back and mm -hmm. so traveling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go with that. Good. Yeah. reciprocate so we do yeah. our best to respect their spiritual and cultural beliefs but they do not reciprocate which means that they don't do the same i the mean same unfortunately thing, exactly. yes they do not respect uh, mm. our beliefs mm -hmm. okay well, let's continue with the next one i just don't know how to react to his comments and jokes he's a real mm, weirdo or maybe free, free spirit what do you think is the answer yeah uh okay yeah, but it's kind of tricky yeah hmm? it's, really, it's, just like a different kind of thing. Hmm? it's a tricky one i would say yeah weirdo yagoda says it's weirdo my wish are the same great well done so definitely that's weirdo sometimes means... i call gaia a weirdo oh, really? <laughs> okay and she calls me a weirdo okay yeah. So different different from other people yes that somebody is uh, just stranger i would say a bit strange a little bit yeah yeah mm -hmm. it could be a kind of a funny way too yeah okay so let's proceed with the next one it's so much easier when a host and a couch surfer are expatriates or maybe compatible hmm, hmm. when it's easier girls i think that you know i'm an answer so i don't live in my country mm -hmm. i live 
in another country. Compatible, right. That's yeah. the correct answer. So here we are. It's so much easier when a host and a cup surfer are compatible. Okay, so let's proceed with the next one. So it was, but Gaia asked me what an expatriate is, and I see yeah. that Sirius has put in expatriate. Um, just to explain what an uh, expatriate is, like an, an expat or an expatriate is somebody who no longer who, who, who doesn't live in their normal country. So I'm American, I'm an expat from America, but I live in Italy, I'm not Italian. So I would be considered an expat. Okay. So, it's, so you don't You're need back. a host and uh, a Rachel, I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. So can you just repeat, please? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. An expatriate is somebody who um, is, no, is not from uh, the, that country. So I'm an expat. I'm an American expat who lives in Italy. In Italy. Gaia is not. Gaia is Italian. So just to okay. give you a note, she didn't know the word expatriate. Okay. So, and to see somebody else was not quite sure. So just to give you the definition of expatriate is someone, you don't, to be a couch surfer, a host and a surfer don't have to be both expatriates. They have okay. to be compatible. They have to get along. Definitely. Uh-huh. Okay, so what about this one? My best friend is so independent and always does what she really wants. She is a free spirit or host. Oh, uh, just lucky people who are, who can do whatever they want. So, any any guesses? Anybody who, free spirit, great, free yeah, spirit, good. pretty easy one, yeah, good, okay. Of course, that's a free spirit. So let's proceed with the next one. Okay, so uh, we'll want to get a good idea of your personality, so be sure to go into detail. When it comes to couch surfing. We're talking about couch surfing, right? Mm -hmm. So if we want to coach somebody, mm -hmm. we want to good, get a good idea of yeah, their... Mm -hmm. Okay, so anybody with the answers? Host, excellent. So that's the uh, host. Good. Well done. I can see that you did the Quizlet. Yeah. So you did your homework even before the webinar. Great. I'm really happy about that. Uh, so let's proceed with the next one. International schools are often a good place for expatriate or encounter children. Hmm. Okay. What do you think? Schools are often a good place for encounter, encounter children. Or yes. well, for children to encounter. To for children encounter. to encounter. Right. But so I will give you the answer. Extract children. children. Definitely, it, hap it happens actually in Poland when there are some British or American or Canadian oh, schools. Okay. Yeah, international school. Okay. Yeah, they're full of uh, children from other countries. Yeah, we also have uh, two international schools here in Bologna. Okay. And there are lots mm -hmm. of expats children that go there. Yeah. Okay, so let's proceed with the next one. I'd like to thank you for the worm hmm, extended to me during my last trip to London. Comfortability or maybe hospitality? What do you think? Nice word, pretty useful when it comes to cup surfing again. Hospitality, mysterious answer, what a mysterious name. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great, well done. Definitely. I'd like to thank you for the warm hospitality extended to me during my last trip to London. Okay, so let's proceed with the next one. So I'm glad you are hmm, crashing on a spare, me crashing on a spare couch for the weekend or maybe putting me up for the weekend. What do you think? What do you think? Any guesses? Anybody who would like to give the answer? Okay, first one, mm, okay, okay, putting me up, yeah, that's the answer, okay, let's go with that, yes, I'm glad you're putting me up for the weekend, which means that you allow me to stay at your place, at your home, mm, okay, what about the next one, you can crush this a couch if you want, or you Put up if you want. You can put up if you want. Mm -hmm. So now you probably you can guess which one. 
because we've already had boot up. So, so the first one, crush on a spur couch. Am I right? Of course, which means that you're going to sl sleep on, the, on a sofa, I guess. Mm -hmm. Actually, in Poland, very often when I have guests, I sleep. I am the you one. Sleep my on husband the sofa. sleep on the sofa, not the guests. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Oh no, we are going to. So I think that we are done with the first part of our webinar. So uh, we revised some words. So now uh, the most interesting part is in front of us. So. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about couch surfing, which might uh, be at the moment pretty, pretty unattainable because we can't travel and definitely it is connected with uh, travel. And what we now, uh, what we are practicing is probably social distancing, not, uh, not traveling and not going anywhere, but still uh, we are pretty positive about that and we're going to share definitely some experience and uh, Rachelle and Gaia are going to tell us about that quite a lot of nice and pretty interesting inspiring and inviting things uh, so first maybe uh, Rachelle what uh, couch surfing is maybe you will explain to uh, yeah to sure. our guests couch and, and surfing it, couch surfing is a way of traveling. It's a it's an app uh, that you can um, download onto your phone or your iPad or some kind of tablet, and you can request to stay at a person's home. So it's similar, maybe to Airbnb if you've heard about it, or even Booking.com or some of these other travel apps, except that it's free. You don't pay to stay. What you do is you do a sort of exchange. Um, you don't have to pay anything. You don't so, have it's to pay anything. so it's for free, so it's for free. You can do an exchange in the sense that maybe it's a cultural exchange. In our family, we consider it like a cultural ex exchange. We enjoy having people come, they request to stay at my house and I read their profile, and then I say, yes, you can stay at our house for one or two nights, uh, and usually we prepare dinner for them, and then we talk. We learn mm -hmm. about their culture, because usually they come from different places, um, different countries. Sometimes we have hosted people from Italy, but we usually host people from other parts of the world. So, Rochelle, so, um so how does it work? I mean, what you have to do to uh, be a couch surfer, to just get this couch for free, just to stay at somebody's uh, house. So how to just step by step, can you just okay. tell us? So let's say I want to come to Warsaw. I have, first you have to download the app and first you have to set up a profile. Would you like to sh uh, would you like to share the profile because we have on the our presentation so we can show the profile how it uh, looks. So you can see our there. profile. Yeah, definitely yours. Uh, and uh, just give me a sec. Mm. Okay. Just wait a second. Um. Well, you're okay. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first picture on the left, uh, you can see uh, kind of our page um, when you go on to look up a host uh, mm -hmm. in a specific city. So if I were going to put in Warsaw, I would say um, Warsaw, these dates, uh, and then you see who is available. And, uh, but first you need to create this profile. So I created our profile. Um, we're missing, there's missing a few pages on this, but um, we put our, our room, like you can do, um, uh, we wrote that we have a public room, so it's not like a hotel, but you would stay in, in the sofa in the middle of the living room. I usually say the max number of surfers is one, even though we have hosted other people. Sometimes we've hosted four. We've hosted five. We've hosted five. Sometimes we say yes to different numbers of people at the same time. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because we have two different sofas that we can turn into beds so we can be creative. <laughs> um, you can choose the preferred gender, so whether or not um, females or males, and we say any are, are welcome. We say, you can say if it's suitable for children, and our house obviously is suitable for children. Um, unfortunately, we I have allergies to cats and dogs, so we say that pets are not welcome in our house. Mm -hmm. um, also, smoking is not welcome, although um, people could smoke on the terrace, but we just say not allowed because I wouldn't want it in my house. And then there's the last one that's same day requests. So if you can um, respond that day, uh, you can request that day and I can say yes. Um, then you give a little bit more information. So I say my sleeping arrangements would be the public room. Do I have pets? No, we do have small pets, but no cats or dogs. Do I have kids at home? Yes, uh, there. I don't smoke in the home. And uh, then I put some pictures uh, of us uh, so they could see a little bit what our life. So the picture in the middle with the orange where there's a large group of people is the sofa that we're sitting on right now. And okay. uh, the picture on the bottom where I'm standing there hula hooping, that these are my hula hoops. And that is the other direction of our living room. Okay. Uh, and uh, how old um, you have to be to uh, join the couch surfing community? Can our teenagers, I mean, can uh, 15 years olds or uh, 14, 16 or 17 year olds uh, become a member of this uh, community or not really? I'm, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it would seem to me that you would need to be 18 in order to do this. Um, thing mm -hmm. that you sign up for this app. I know every app has their different um, age settings. I'm pretty sure you'd have to be 18. However, if young people, teenagers wanted to host people, they could encourage their parents um, to host and their parents would then together with them create a profile. Their parents would have okay. to agree that they wanted to do this, like this is what I do. And uh -huh. um, and I one of the main reasons I do couch surfing is because I want Gaia to meet people who speak English from all over the world. So I want her to have friends in different countries. I want her to know that English is really important if she ever wants to travel. She already speaks English, she's bilingual, but I always wanted it to be something that was cool and something okay. that was positive. And so, um, and also for her to learn cultural things. Uh -huh. So uh, this, this, I mean, motivated you to create um, a profile uh, on this is one, I mean, one other, of the reasons. This is one of the reasons. The other reason okay. is I wanted to travel and I didn't, I don't always have a lot of money. So okay. it's when I first started this, I was um, even, had less money and so I really wanted to be able to travel to different um, places and use couch surfing but I felt like to be in good karma I should share um, I should share my space so that when I went to ask other people um, then I would feel like I was worthy I, I have already contributed to the the couch surfing and actually as a host the first thing I look at is how many times has that person hosted other people? Um, okay, so here you're talking, Rochelle, what uh, the most important aspects of it is when you are just uh, choosing somebody is to, uh, when you're choosing a person who's going to stay at your house. Yes, sure. so these are the things that you're looking at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now often I usually ask Gaia, um, so I usually receive now I haven't received because I've closed my, not closed my account, but as everybody who's not traveling right now, um, we, we have put on um, that we're not hosting at the moment. Um, but normally, yeah, there's some questions, good. Yeah, um, is it, yeah, is it dangerous? I mean, we're going to talk about the risk, but we'll still, definitely talk about that. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. definitely. Um, I'll definitely talk about that as well, it's a good question. Um, um, so, um when when I get a request, I usually, you know, when it, when it's a busy <coughs> season, um sometimes I get three or four or five requests a day. And I can't say no to I can't say yes to everybody. One, because I don't have enough room. And two, it takes energy to host people. So um when somebody when I get a request, first I read the letter and I usually if the message is in Italian, I usually say no because my profile is in English. 
So I expect people to write in English to me. Mm -hmm. um, if that means that I know they've read my profile too, they know that I'm American, they know that I've, that I've written everything in English and I prefer, you know, you can see that I prefer English. So when they write to me in English, I read their letter. Their um, their request. It's a it's a. So they're obliged to write to you the letter of uh, some kind of letter. Yes, the request letter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And okay. usually, you try to in if you're writing a request letter, you should try to make sure that you're writing um, a request letter that shows that you have read the profile of the person. You don't want to just send 15 request letters to 15 people in Warsaw without reading their their um, profile. You want to see who you want to stay with, what their okay. home looks like, what their family looks like. Mm -hmm. And so when I receive a request, uh, first I read their um, their message uh, that they've their letter that they've written to me, their message that they've read that they've written. And if there's something interesting, then I go hmm. And then uh, um, after that, I usually check their profile. Okay. And I see, are they active house couch surfers? Have they okay. hosted anyone? My first question is, have they hosted anybody else? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I see, have these hosts always said, yes, they want them to, they would host them again. That's what the host can say. Yes, I would host them again, or no, I wouldn't host them again. Mm -hmm. And so I look at those two things. If they hosted, it's, a lot, especially a lot of people, it's very difficult for me to say no, because okay. I feel like a good host uh, is somebody who's going to be a good guest. Okay. And they know how couch surfing works. So I really okay. love to say yes to, to hosts. Okay. Great. Uh, and what about, uh, do you also um, just look at the satisfaction ratings? Is it something like that in the profile as well? Yeah, that's the um, if people if you would people would host you again or if they wouldn't host you like it's a positive or okay. a negative um, confirmation of of that person's experience. OK, uh, OK. Uh, so uh, and uh, when you've got your eventual and you've got your couch surfers, so how do you take care of them? Um, first, can I just answer the question that, um, of course, okay. Uh, Jagoda question. Uh -huh. Jagoda said, uh -huh. can you assess the host on this app? Is this person trustworthy? Exactly. So I mm -hmm. give you the perspective as the host who's checking the couch surfers, but the same mm -hmm. way as, as you are requesting, um, to stay in a place, it's the same way you can see my, um, my profile. I have over um 60 uh if you go into my app i have over 60 um 60 uh what do you call them Refer references references thank you mm -hmm. uh, i have over 60 references and on my profile 63 references and every and you go and you click on that and everybody um of those 63 references um uh 56 surfers from 28 countries would stay with me again. And I've hosted one and I would stay one host and one would host me again. So it so. is, so it is really inviting. And so it means that uh, we all uh, come to you. I mean, uh, when, <laughs> when we're going to have this opportunity and after the uh, coronavirus uh, disappears. So we are coming to you. Yeah, you can. And if you create a profile uh, on couch surfing, you can find us in Bologna and you can read some of the references that people have written about us. Mm -hmm. um, and do people come back to you? Rochelle, do people come back to you? Yeah. Who do you remember who has come back? Um, Giovanni has come back. Oh, true. Giovanni. Giovanni lived um, in Rome, and I went. I stayed in. I my friend went to stay. So Giovanni stayed with us, and then when my friend went to Rome, she stayed with Giovanni, and then Giovanni came back and stopped by another and time and stayed with us again. again. Yeah. And then brought his girlfriend. And brought his girlfriend. Yep. Yeah. And then we've had. Um, do you remember the Russian guy, Vladimir? Oh yeah, you puppeteer. Had, oh yeah, we had a puppeteer. Yeah. So we had um, Vladimir, who is uh, fifty, around fifty years old, 
and he has a he is a puppeteer. He has a um he does like the burettina, the the puppet. The puppet. Uh -huh. And um, he usually comes around Christmas time. He stayed with us twice, and uh, he was going to come this summer, this Christmas, but it didn't work. He ended up missing us. But yeah, they uh they they we've had some people come back. Even mm -hmm. okay. I cozy isn't she no, no. it wasn't ever okay sorry um, there's another I mean, yeah there's another question I mean, where in the world yeah. are there the most couch surfers yes. mm. i don't know i think that um italy is not super i mean there are a lot of couch surfers in italy but it's not a very cultured for couch surfing it italians in general tend to be um a bit scared or mm, they think I'm a bit crazy when I say I do couch surfing. They like the idea, but they're not, they think it's a little bit strange when I have foreigners uh, or strangers who come into my home. Mm -hmm. And there is still Yagoda's question. Do you know if some yeah. hosts give tours around their city areas? I think that's popular, that's but uh, Rochelle can just answer the question. That's Yagoda's a great question. question. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we, um, sometimes Gaia takes different, um, do you want to say about it? Um, so a lot of the times when my mom's working, I usually have a free day after school and the couch surfers are usually here and they ask if they wanted to do a tour, they wanted to go out on a walk and they asked me if I wanted to go with them. So I go out with them in the center and I do a bit of a tour. I, bring them to the best places and then usually we get something to eat and then we come home. Yeah, so it's really educational, I would say, and uh, it works It works for both sides, I would say. Yeah, Am I wrong? it's not, you can't expect that people can. Like, I work a lot, I'm very busy, and um, I don't mind if I if I'm free and I and I, we want to go out for um, an ice cream or something, I don't mind. Um, doing it sometimes if I if it's on a weekend and maybe I have lots of energy and I want to walk around the city Sometimes I've done like full-on tours and stuff, but um, I don't like it if anyone were to expect me to do it, you know, I usually say um, I expect my um, hope my guests to be relatively independent um, because I Can't take care of them all the time. So maybe we could go back to your other question, which is how do you? Um, take care of how do I take care of guests? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so usually the guests will, we organize a time uh, when I'll be home and um, I'm a little bit different. I usually just give my guests a, a key to my house. I'm a pretty trusting person. Um, not everyone does this. They're, everyone has different rules, different ways that they do it. Some people say they, when the guest is, the host is home, they can come home and then they have to leave in the morning when the host goes to work. There's different ways. I'm a pretty trusting person, so I just give that person an extra set of keys. And um, so I meet them. They leave usually leave their bag. I show them where the sofa is, which we have an upstairs room. Um, so I say it's in the middle of the living room, but actually we kind of have a little magical place upstairs next to our terrace. And um, and then I give them the keys, and I let, I tell them that we'll be home for dinner, and I usually prepare dinner. Um, sometimes they'll bring things like chocolates or some special <laughs> treats, mm -hmm. some special treats from their um, their home. Uh, we've mm -hmm. had lots of candies from all sorts of countries in the world. Um, have you got fudges as well from Poland? Uh, no, we have not yet. Someone will have to bring that. We haven't had fudges <laughs> from Poland yet. Okay. Um, but we have had um, so we have had some guests bring really special treats. Um, one, cu a couple of um, young women from Moldavia. Uh, we hosted them, and they brought us pens with our names engraved on them. I mean, they were really exceptional. Um, they they were so honored that we said yes. Uh, and I have another friend who's Moldovian, so I asked him if he wanted to take them out and show them a little bit around Bologna. And they did, and they had some really good friends. So um, some some guests bring really really sweet treats. When you are when you are just telling us about uh, how you treat your guests and how you actually uh, host um, uh, the guests, uh, 
it sounds it sounds like it's so easy and so natural that you treat your guests very like like the family members but um was it always that easy or you need some time to get used to i mean strangers walking in your i would say in your house and uh, you know i think that uh, this is the process am i right or uh, yeah because you have to get to, you've got different people just walking your, uh, you know, your corridors, you're uh, just preparing some food in the kitchen, then going to the bathroom. I think it must take some time to get used to it. Yeah, I mean, the first thing you have to know that is everyone is different. And everyone who comes from different places have different cultures. And part of the beauty for me of couch, couch surfing is to have these experiences with people who are different than you. Mm -hmm. It's really great when you find somebody who connects with you and you're like you and you have these magical um, moments. Mm -hmm. But I think that the moments that are um, maybe uncomfortable are the ones that you grow from the most. Mm -hmm. They're the ones, you agree? Yeah. They're the okay. ones that you learn the most from. Maybe you learn more about yourself uh, than you learn about them. But something about okay. the way they do things, you see the way they do them different. Um, but I think that you learn the most. Uh -huh. and I think that uh, you need to learn to respect I think other people's space and definitely this is the lesson for the couch surfers to learn actually to respect your space that uh, probably there are some uh, you know some kind of um, uh, places in your house which they are not expected to uh, be am I right yeah we had one, kind of one bad do you remember that? Oh, we probably really only had one bad experience. And uh, it was a, a French woman and her daughter. And uh, we were really pretty happy to have, what's that? Uh, pretty interesting because we were talking about that. And that's good that you are just uh, talking about that now. So yeah, just um, tell the story. Yeah, she was, um, we, I was really excited because she had a daughter the same age as Gaia. Her daughter did not speak English. So unfortunately the daughters couldn't communicate very well. Um, and my daughter doesn't speak French now. She speaks a little bit, but <laughs> not enough. Um, and I gave her the house because we had an event and we actually slept another place. So I told them, you can stay in my house. We will be back tomorrow and we'll have dinner together. And I prepared their bed upstairs. And when I left, uh, then when we came back the next day, I noticed that someone <laughs> had slept in my bed because the things that were on my bed were moved. Okay. It's kind of like that story of Goldilocks and the three bears <laughs> where you can tell that someone has been sleeping in your bed. <laughs> and I confronted her and I said, why did you sleep in my bed? Like, that's not okay. And she's like, and she told me that she did not. She lied. And she lied okay. again and she still lied. So I did have to write her a bad, I, I, I didn't write, I mean, I was just honest and I just said, um, you know, I would not host her again. And I was disappointed with the way that she handled the situation. And mm -hmm. I said, it's really important to be honest with people. And, you know, when someone provides something for you, it's, it's a gift. So you have to think about how can you help that other person? You don't have to, um, you know, a lot of people offer to cook a meal, maybe a traditional meal from their country. And sometimes we've had people do that. Um, but usually I really like to share either in a traditional Italian meal or maybe a traditional American meal. And I like to, I like to do the cooking in my kitchen. Um, but people have to really think about when you travel, you know, it's, a, it's free. But you want to be conscious and um, generous to the people and ask them, can I bring you anything from the supermarket? Um, do you need, can I do anything to help you? Um, mm -hmm. And and then just kind of find a way to, to give back to the people who are giving you a place to stay. You wanna say something? Well, I had like, there was another girl that me and Melissa didn't really like, but like, it was just cause she was a bit uncomfortable. So Gaia said there was uh -huh. that, yeah, there was one person who stayed with them that was a bit, a bit of a weirdo, maybe a bit of a person who was a little bit different to them and they felt a little uncomfortable um, because sometimes that happens. And I think, did you, did you learn from that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe not everyone's different. Yeah. yeah. Mm.
So that was also the lesson for you to learn. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there are some questions, yeah. Michelle. I think that um, if someone comes but you are not satisfied with his stay, can you end sure. his residence? I mean, yeah. Can you just yeah, say sure. no? Sure. Can you just okay? Uh, it's absolutely your house, and you don't. You have no commitment. You've made a, a, you know, everything. It's important to communicate on couch surfing. If anyone has any, it's also really important to be honest when you write a referral for somebody. If you, like that woman, you know, um, I had another woman who uh, requested to stay with me and then at the end um, ended up not showing up, but she did it because she found a, a living situation, but she never communicated to me that she wasn't coming. And I was extremely offended by this, that she mm -hmm. never bothered to say, oh, I'm sorry, my plans changed. And okay. so I wrote her a, a disappointed, I said I wouldn't host her, and I think that she needs to learn a little bit about how, how couch surfing works. And she okay. was really upset about this. She, she messaged me and said, Rochelle, you need to take that away. I said, no, I was just being honest. And I think that if you don't respect the people who have offered your home, then you should have a message that says you need to learn how to do that. It's okay. really, number one is respect. And if somebody is not respecting you or your space, you absolutely can tell them that they have to leave. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. With the French woman, we did not ask her to leave. Um, we decided to just stay in our room and uh, not participate in the conversation with her. Um, I was really offended. Um, but she slept that night and the next morning they left. And mostly I was offended though, not that she stayed in my bed, but that she lied about it. Okay. And I think that if you, if I was honest enough in, in, in couch surfing is an exchange. It's an exchange of, um, an exchange of, of culture, culture, of attitudes, space, okay. of generosity on both okay. of parts. So mm -hmm. you have to respect. Number one is you have to respect the place that you go to. And if and you're a host, you have to respect the differences of others without, mm -hmm. um, does that make because, sense? Yeah, it makes sense because you accepted this couch surfer. So you, if think, you accept somebody from a country which you might not respect the, I don't know, the beliefs or the religion, but still you said yes. So you have to respect that. So as you yeah. said, respect and honesty. And right. uh, yeah, so th these are the two things which are the most important ones. But uh, something is, well, you know, when she says, are you not satisfied? It depends on what you mean by not being satisfied. Mm -hmm. I mean, if okay. you're just not upset because you don't have, you're not finding your best friend, that's not a good reason to tell that person they have to leave. If okay. you feel uncomfortable about something that they do, usually I talk to people first. I don't okay. just think you have to leave. But okay. in this case, you know, if she ever asked to come back, I would say no. And I didn't make her leave also because she had a daughter. If it had been a different situation, maybe I would have asked her to leave. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if, if someone were to do something that would be disrespectful to me or my daughter, then I would ask them to leave. But I've never had this kind of situation. So it means that it really works and that people are good and they are honest and they respect uh, when they decide on such a way of traveling. So they uh, respect your expectations. You, they respect what they, as you said, uh, they read the profile pretty, um, like, you know, diligently and carefully and they know what to expect and what you expect. Um, okay, and, and are there any uh, day limits, time limits that they can stay or they can stay for one week, for one month or just it's like it's about one night or two nights stay or it depends or, or it's flexible. This question? Okay, Gaia wants to answer this question. Uh -huh. um, well, we usually only have them. Okay. Okay. Uh, we usually have them for two nights or three nights, um, not a lot. But sometimes, in some occasions, if we really like them, we can have them for a week. And once we had this girl over for like a couple of days, and then she said that she had to stay for a month because she had to do something and she couldn't find a place. And we really liked her. And then she she became one of like she was really close to us and she was like really nice and stuff. So we let her stay for a very long time, and she stayed for like a month. And then another girl that stayed here for like two months, probably, she actually 
Um, uh, so yeah, we were really close to her too, and we still are. Um, and yeah, we have contact with a lot of these people that that sometimes in some occasions they stay for a couple of months, but usually it's only one or two days, okay. maybe a week. So on is my it, profile, is it yeah, is it popular for backpackers? Yeah. Um, it's kind of like staying in a youth hostel, which are becoming kind of less and less nowadays. Um, it's kind of maybe a more modern way of um, youth hostels. Mm -hmm. um, on my profile, it says one to two days. And I say, okay. because in Italy, we have a saying that after three days, the fish starts to smell. <laughs> and this is a saying that whenever you, you like, even your relatives, like you can stay one to two days, but by the third day, the it's, fish it's starts too to much. Smell. Yes. Too it's smelly. Too <laughs> you need to go like. Um, and, ref and refresh yourself. <laughs> yeah. But when Gaia was a little bit younger, now she's very independent. But when she was younger, um, you know, I'm a, I was a single mom during a lot of this. So um, I still am a single mom. So sometimes when I would meet a young woman that would really connect well with Gaia and would connect well with me and I felt comfortable having her in my home, um, then I would just ask them to stay and I would say in exchange, would you help me with Gaia um, a couple days a week or can you help her with her homework or will you help cook while I'm at class those nights? So it was kind of like um, free babysitting um, in exchange for a free place to stay. And when there was this connection that was good, um, that's when we had people who stayed for a long time and really touched our lives. Mm -hmm. So what, just to, I think it's some kind of summarizing. So what about the benefits of carp surfing? I can see that there are thousands of them, but let's summarize them. Let's just list the benefits of carp surfing just to encourage our teenagers to, when they're going to be ready with the age, especially when they're going to turn 18, they're going to be able to travel on their own, to do it in a very eco-friendly way, I would say. Yeah. So, so what, what about the benefits, Rochelle? I would say let's list them. Benefits are practice speaking English. If oh, you're a non-English yeah. speaker, it's a great way to practice speaking any language. It doesn't have to be English, but you can find uh, if you want to speak practice any language, it's a great way to to practice. Um, there, it's also a great way to learn about to really feel the country that you're visiting. Um, you get to stay in a family, so you get to see how people live. You hear in our family, we speak Italian and English and we eat Italian food and American food. So you really get to feel what it really feels like and to stay in a real Italian house and what it feels to live in a, in a real Italian community. So you really get that cultural um, experience Close that's nest. really real. Uh -huh. um, you get to push yourself outside of boundaries that maybe you're naturally, maybe you prefer staying in a hotel, you like everything like this, and maybe you want to try something different to see if you're, if this is something, you know, to grow, to learn, to grow as your, to grow as a, into human being. So to push your own boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, it's better for the environment because you're not, uh, mm -hmm. you know, staying in a hotel with all the cleaning and all, um, you know, all you're the reducing light. your carbon, you know, uh, footprint, definitely. Yes. It's definitely um, uh, a, a less carbon footprint. Um, can you think of any others? I mean, there are, there are lots, but um, and, and also making connections with people so that when I I have people now all over the world that I can go and stay with. Oh, and she does too. I love, Great. I love the couch surfers um, that we really got connected to. In fact. Um, in a lot of comments, they say you guys can come visit us whenever you want, and in a lot of places in the world, we have places to go and yeah. places we want to visit now. Adam, uh, yeah, Amelia asks, uh, how many days a year do you host someone? Hmm? Uh, maybe once a month. Probably, yeah, once a month. Depends Not, how long they stay. It depends on how long they stay. It depends on what's going on in my life. If my life is really busy, I can't add a couch surfer too. Um, but maybe during the holidays, sometimes we're at home and we're not working. So maybe we like to have guests then in the summer. I don't host because we don't usually stay in Bologna. We tend to travel. Uh, we do summer camps or, um, different. Um, I try to find different jobs cause Bologna is very hot in the summer. She usually goes to America, uh, to visit her grandma and, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Adam asked, what was the worst thing your host did? And I've never had a host. I've only had, I've only hosted, host been hosted once by the same person, 
and, and her name was Julia and she lived and she is amazing. She's lovely. She also came and I hosted her here too. And she hosted me for 12 days, both times for two summers in a row for my favorite festival. And she never did anything wrong. I love, she, she cooked for us and uh, she gave me lots of freedom. And then I have this special window that I would always clean at the end of every time I stayed there. I, that would be like my thing to do for her. Um, because that window, it was the window out for the terrace and never got cleaned. And every time I, I came back, we actually, we stayed there twice. Cause one time Gaia yeah, came Yeah, cause I me. stayed there too. And it was really nice. She's really nice. Yeah. So that, that the worst thing a, a guest has ever done was just sleep in my bed that one time. <laughs> that, that <laughs> was French woman. But really, really the worst thing that was anyone has done was lied about it. Yeah. That okay. Was, yeah. So lying. Mm -hmm. So do you want me to talk about any kind of um, bad things maybe? Yeah, the risks maybe because yeah. uh, I mean I think somebody asked at the very beginning about the yeah. uh, different dangers and uh, dangerous things. Yeah, you know it can be dangerous, but you know everything in life, traveling can be dangerous. Um, traveling by yourself, traveling as a young person, uh, going out on the street and the wrong neighborhood at the wrong time can be dangerous. Life can be dangerous. So just like if you were going out. Um, in the wrong place at the wrong time, you want to consider that when you're traveling. You want to make sure you do a really good job look reading the profiles of the hosts that you're requesting. If you're a young woman, you want to make sure you stay with a family or with another young woman. Um, it wouldn't be very safe for you to stay with a single man, for example. Mm -hmm. um, could be, but maybe when you get older and you feel more confident when you have more life skills. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if when I look for a place for her and I to travel, I usually look for a family or I look for women. I don't know. I don't usually stay uh, with men if it's the two mm -hmm. of us. Um, I think that, you know, it's important to if you have concerns, uh, you have to trust that you're going to learn something. And if you are uncomfortable staying in weird situations or on a couch somewhere in the middle of something, then it's probably not the type of tra traveling for you. Yes, because um, it's about, also, yeah, it's about, uh, it's probably, it's not for everyone. It's not for everybody. Um, okay. I think hosting could be for a lot of people, but again, you have to be able to trust. Traveling on couch surfing isn't for everyone. You have to be really open to the experience, mm -hmm. open to meeting incredible people, Mm -hmm. And you might wind up in the most magical bedrooms of all, which is our bedroom upstairs uh, with twinkly lights and the stars um, mm. and having a lovely cooked Italian meal and sharing it with um, me, Gaia and my boyfriend for Bryce. So there are fabulous things, but it isn't for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the only risks we've just discussed, a few of them. Yeah. Definitely um, more benefits than the risks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, one said, what did your friends and family say when you told them you wanted to start couch surfing? Mm -hmm. um, I talk a lot about couch surfing. I'm, I, I work at the university, so I talk to a lot of students, um, university age, and I tell them and it's a great experience for to learn English and to meet people. Um, and a lot of people kind of look at me like, you're, you're safe. Like you feel like, I think someone asked you, like, aren't you afraid? Um, but I think that most people who are, they haven't traveled. When I was 18, I traveled around Europe by myself. I had a backpack, uh, and I didn't have a lot of money and I stayed most, mostly in really cheap youth hostels. Although I stayed sometimes at different people's houses. Um, so I already kind of experienced it and I felt there were some situations that maybe were not always safe. Um, but I always knew how to take care of myself and make sure that I was stayed in safe situations. What? Um, but like I am, I've traveled by myself, but like, um, it, I wasn't like, I, I, I just traveled like to the US. Gaia traveled, she took her, an airplane, um, by herself to the United States last summer when she was 11. And, um, I mean, she was guided between the airports. Um, but yeah, I wanted her to to get the experience that she can learn and have be confident traveling the world um, mm -hmm. even by herself. Okay. Uh, I mean, so what do you like most about couch surfing, Rochelle? What do you like most about couch surfing? Uh, meeting people and their, oh, meeting people and uh, meeting their culture. Mm -hmm. I like most the magical connections. Um, that sometimes happen, a lot of times happen. Um, 
And the um, I really love the references that people write for me afterwards. And when I'm having a sad day, um, I might go back and look at them and read them. And they just say some really beautiful things about about me about our house about how we treated them and yeah mm -hmm. um, okay Gaia you want to say something um, we can't we have to yeah you have to speak up a bit because we can't so, hear you so uh, they do write a lot of references on you know couch surfing but we even have this book where um, we put upstairs and then they just write if they if, when they have something really like they start they just write a reference that's actually they're really pretty sometimes and really nice and we just go through them and we take photos with them so we can you know. yeah mm -hmm. and I when I'm having a bad day I, I sometimes like to just uh, um, read some of the things that people read that have said to me mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so during this time, uh, I mean, do you, uh, under quarantine, uh, how can we experience couch surfing? Because we can't travel. We can't travel. So yeah, I, we I've heard to... that there is a Facebook page on couch surfing so that people are posting um, pictures. And you can even make your own slideshow of your own pictures of your own city or your own travels, people you've mm -hmm. met. Um, you can um, you can find ways to, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there are lots of like museums and things that you can visit right now. So super. Um, so yeah. you can connect. Uh, you can connect, and you can practice the social distancing. So doing everything online and uh, connecting uh, with people, and even as you said uh, on this Facebook couch surfing uh, Facebook fan page, you can just observe and you can watch films from different countries. So just try to visualize that yeah. you are there. Adam has a really good question. Yeah. Adam says, um, have you ever met someone that taught you some interesting mm -hmm. things? We've learned millions of things, oh, but yes. what do you want to say? Uh, I know you're going to say this. <laughs> so when my mom was in Florida, um, we had this host, me and guest. another ho guest, sorry, a guest um, that me and another guest had because another guest was already here. And she came and she cooked us this amazing Brazilian meal. And since she's like a famous belly dancer, uh, she taught us belly dancing and she gave us some belly dancing skirts, skirts and she just taught us that. Great. Fun. Yeah, the belly dancing was very cool. Super. Mm -hmm. I know, but I'm now friends with her on Facebook and I see her belly dancing, um, uh, her belly dancing. She's been doing um, belly dancing lessons um, videos on her face because she can't can't perform right now so um she she's been doing um these videos for us and she's really phenomenal and she's <laughs> really really sweet so you can learn it's okay so you can learn a lot of things from the people that uh, who visit your uh your house your home yep. your family i would say yeah absolutely uh, and um, one more thing now, this uh, just spending so many days at home um, without uh, any opportunities to go out, to walk, to meet people. So just tell us about your uh, routine, Rachel and Gaia, during the quarantine. What do we do first in the morning? Yes, and any advice maybe for us? Well, um, I usually wake up an hour later sometimes, or usually, or the same an time. An hour early before school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wake up an hour earlier for school, and then we have breakfast in my mom's bed, because <laughs> we like having breakfast in bed, and then me and my mom go to our study and work sections. But first we get dressed, yeah. we do our hair, uh, I might put a little makeup on. We brush so her you teeth. prepare for the day? We you prepare, prepare as for the day you... as if we were going out. Gaia does her hair. She puts on a pretty dress sometimes or, you know, comfortable but cute, you know, because we're going to start our day. It feels good. Mm -hmm. And then she goes to class and I come here to my couch and I do my courses. And then usually in the afternoon we'll do something fun. Like today we dyed Easter eggs. And Page usually eggs. at night after. Or during dinner, after dinner, we watch a movie all together. Sometimes we'll watch a movie all together, or we'll do something all together. We'll have a party, maybe. And one thing we always do every day is we walk together. We do a sort of exercise. Uh, we lay out yoga mats in the middle of the room, and we all do a 30-minute online. And Gaia hates it. I hate it. But I make her do it because we all feel better if we do 30 minutes of exercise. And we eat really good food. 
Um, we don't eat a lot of um, junk food. We eat healthy food. We cook a lot. Um, so I would say the, my best advice is get up and start your day fresh. Get dressed for the day. Exercise a little bit every day. Eat healthy every day. And look around and see what's beautiful in your home and uh, in your in your life. And just get stuff done. And get stuff yeah. done. Yeah. Do something every day. Yeah, that's 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 really good. Just a great piece of advice for us, especially um, just in, in Poland. The spring starts, and the weather is really nice. It's really sunny, so we get a lot of energy. This is what I got today. So it was really, it was a beautiful day. So we need to be really positive, and uh, yeah, and we need to survive in these really yeah. difficult uh, during these dif difficult days. Uh, okay, so there's still one more question, uh, or even two. I don't know the answer to these questions. They yeah, say, I, 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 this, is what I, this is what I and how many stars have got. This is your homework, darling. <laughs> you guys get to to figure out. Um, uh, uh, Amelia says, "Can you go to the shop when you want?" No, no, we are still under severe um, quarantine uh, in Italy. Um, we yeah. we can go one adult. So we have been in quarantine since yeah. a month and a half. Yeah. And um, we are only one adult is out allowed to go to the supermarket by themselves. Um, all of the other shops are still closed. Um, we Gaia has stayed home. She does go to her father's and then back to my house. Those are the only yeah. places she's been. Uh, same with me. I go to the supermarket. You have to have a letter written by the government um, saying that you're allowed to go there. Like you have to sign. I auto certify. We have the same really intense um, quarantine, yeah. and mm -hmm. it will be like that at least for another month. Um, we don't know how long, but yeah, we're not going. We're not going out. We're just uh, living our life. We've been doing it for a long time. We were the, one of the first countries to have lockdown, and um, That's, yeah, it's okay. okay. Yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. There's still uh, Adam's question. Uh, mm, the quarantine benefits your bonds uh, with people. Okay, yeah. so Adam, that's a great question. He says, "Do you are you more connected to people?" I would say I'm oh, definitely yeah. more connected to my daughter and with my boyfriend who yeah. is staying here with us during this period, but also with my family in America. You know, my life just got kind of busy. Um, and I didn't have a lot of time to call my family, especially with time zones, you know, it's seven hours difference, but now we're really, we're really more connected. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. my sister and I were kind of struggling with some issues, but now it's like, it doesn't exist. Like we love each other and we're connected and you contact your cousins more often. Yeah, I am more connected to my mom and her, um, for Bryce. And I'm really more connected to my dad right now and um, his girlfriend. So I go there more often, as much as I can. Um, and then I am really connected to my family in the U.S. and a bit more to the in Australia, just because we FaceTime a lot more. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're home, so we and uh, we we have we we want to be connected. Um, Mysterious says, "Where do you work?" <laughs> Good question. Uh, we didn't do an introduction at the beginning. I work. I, I did say I work at the University of Bologna, uh, which is the oldest university uh, in, in Europe or in the world. It's over 600 years old, and I am a language expert. So I speak. Uh, I teach English, and I also teach English to children using music. So some of the similar methods that um, early stage uses, and um, yeah, we have a YouTube video. <laughs> and, um, a YouTube channel. And today a new video is going to come out because we have an Easter one of us decorating at Skugs. So we usually, um, my mom usually posts just videos of um, doing like uh, like singing of uh, lessons. And then we post, uh, and then sometimes we post um, like cool things that we are doing, like Easter egg decorating or just like an intro, something, just something fun. So a guy is learning how to YouTube and uh, Baby Musical Playground uh, is our um, is our channel. It's new. We're not very famous, but we are having fun and we're creating songs for kids. So and that's amazing that you are. I mean, your bond definitely. I mean, the daughter and the mother bond is really great, and it, it is it is really it is really it is really great and it's not easy. Yeah, and exciting. 
It's not easy every day. No, actually, thanks to Fred Rice, it's so much cooler. If he wasn't here, we'd probably already been, like, we'd both <laughs> be in our room separated, like, not Yeah, like, my not boyfriend, nothing. who you saw on the first page, uh, he's the one who... Um, like hair, glasses. Yeah, on, on, our, on our profile. So, if you come okay. to Bologna, when you come to Bologna, when the coronavirus yeah. is finished and you're ready to travel the world... Super. Start up, um, start hosting... And um, if you have a chance, and then if you want, um, yeah, if you want, uh, you can come to Bologna and tell us that you met us here and Super. on this webinar, and we'd love to host you. Gaia wants to answer Adam's question. So um, we do have pets. So here I have three. We have three pets. Uh, we have a fish. A that's fish. Katie. Uh, we have a canary. A canary. Canary. That's called pigwig. And we have a hamster that's called Cupcake. And Cupcake. Then, Cupcake. And then at my dad's, I have a dog that's called Vida. Yeah. Okay, girls. I think that um, that will, th this is the time to finish. So um, it was a great pleasure to talk with you, girls. Um, I hope that uh, yeah, we're going to meet someday in Italy or in Poland yes. here. And yeah. thank you, thank you very much for uh, this one hour with us. We are You're really welcome. happy. We are really happy to have you. Uh, and thanks with for us the great questions. The yeah. great questions, and they were interested. Interesting. So, what yeah. interesting things can you suggest for us to do now? Uh, okay. So I suggest <laughs> to go in your room and set up a tent. Yeah. Put in the comfiest things. And just sit there and read, watch TV, whatever you like. Just do that. We did camping. We do crazy things. We set up the house. For, we did. We set up a house to do a tiki party, like a Hawaiian party, and we did a Hawaiian parties. <laughs> so we, a lot of parties. We do. Yeah. We like to do parties. We set up the tent in the middle of the living room. We watched a movie in the tent, and uh, she sleeps up in the tent. Um, and now she said we got a smaller tent, and she set it up in her room. Um, we dyed eggs for Easter. Yeah, we do. Just. Be creative. Use your creativity. Turn off your electronics. Do yeah. your homework, obviously, and watch your webinars and things like that. But and enjoy like family time. And enjoy your family time. Yeah. Like, do things together. Yeah, mm -hmm. doing things together with family now is, I think. Play games, play board yeah, games. Yeah, play board games. Cards. Yeah. And yeah. just do the simplest things, too, with your family. Yeah. Just talk, too. Just, yeah. Breakfast yeah. in bed. <laughs> and talk a lot. Yeah. Girls, thank you, thank you very You're much, welcome. and have a lovely thank evening, you, and see you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Bye, you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye from Italy. Come thank here. you. <laughs>